All right, welcome back to our unit on stoichiometry. Today's topic is percent yield. Lesson three of three, your objectives are as follows. Okay, to learn the difference between the theoretical and actual yield, to understand what the percent yield is and how we calculate it, to know how to calculate the percent yield for a product given its actual yield. Okay, for your quick ride. Recall our simple sandwich recipe below, where two slices of bread require one slice of meat to produce one complete sandwich. Imagine you just made 10 sandwiches to take with you to the park. When you get to the park, you realize that one of the sandwiches is missing a slice of meat. What percentage of complete sandwiches did you actually make? Consider the reaction below. Imagine you're a chemist and you'd like to make two molecules of NH3. After the reaction, you realize that you've produced only one molecule of NH3. What percentage of NH3 were you able to make? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. I'm going to move on. All right, so actual versus theoretical yield. The actual amount of product measured and obtained in lab is called the actual yield. The ideal amount of product predicted by calculations and stoichiometry is called the theoretical yield. So for example, suppose you carefully measure the amounts of certain reactants. Using these amounts in a balanced chemical reaction, you calculate and predict the amount of product that should form based on stoichiometry. This is your theoretical yield. Next, you perform the reaction and mix the two chemicals together. After the reaction, you collect and weigh the amount of product that actually formed in the lab. And this is your actual yield, what you actually got in the lab. So most likely you will find that the actual yield is less or more than the theoretical yield. Why? Well, it could be because of one of the reasons here below. Perhaps not all the reactants were used up. Perhaps some product stuck to the glassware and was not measured. Some reactions simply did not go to completion. Sometimes side reactions can occur with different chemicals like air or water. The produced product is contaminated by another substance, often water. Okay, so for your notes, what is the difference between the actual and theoretical yield? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, so percent yield. To describe how much product is actually produced in a chemical reaction, chemists calculate something called percent yield. Percent yield compares the amount of actual product produced in the lab to the amount predicted by stoichiometry and calculations. So to calculate the percent yield, divide the actual yield, okay, which you actually got in lab, by the theoretical yield, which you got on from your calculations, and multiply this value by 100. So, if a reaction works perfectly and every single atom has reacted in the proper manner, it would produce the theoretical yield. But the percent yield essentially tells us how efficient or productive a reaction is. So, a percent yield close to 100% tells us that the reaction is very efficient and very productive. So, for your notes, what is percent yield? Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you're right. I'm going to move on here. All right, so calculating percent yield. Consider the following balanced chemical reaction we've been working with. Okay, so if 5 grams of N2 reacts with excess extra H2, H2 here, what is the theoretical yield of NH3? Okay, what is the percent yield of NH3 if your experimental lab procedure produces 4.9 grams of NH3? Well, this is your actual yield. There's a little hint here. Okay, so notice here, you're only given one reactant. You're telling that this is an excess, so you have plenty of this. Okay, so step one, calculate the theoretical yield using stoichiometry. So let's use our grams of limiting reactant here because we know this is an excess. So we can start with 5 grams of N2 here. Okay, and we know that one mole of N2 okay, is to 28 grams of N2. And according to our balanced chemical reaction here, 
Okay, we know one mole of N2 will produce two moles of NH3. Okay, and finally we know that one mole of NH3 is to 17.04 grams of NH3, the molar mass. Okay, our units cancel and we get 6.08 grams of NH3. Okay, this is our theoretical yield. So, calculate the percent yield by dividing the actual yield given the problem by the theoretical yield, what you did with stoichiometry. Okay, so our actual yield given in the problem, what we got in lab, divided by our, our theoretical yield, what we, what we calculated using stoichiometry. Okay, then multiply it by 100. Okay, so an 80.59% yield. Okay, which is pretty good. The closer to 100, okay, the more productive and efficient our reaction is. All right, so practice. Okay, so go ahead and pause this while you try to do this on your own. When you're ready to check your work, okay, and see how you did, go ahead and hit play. All right, let's see how you did. So remember, this is an excess. So you can start with 9 grams of N2 to determine, okay, your theoretical yield. So start with your, what's given in the problem here, 9 grams of N2. And we know 28.02 grams is the molar mass, one mole of N2. And we know according to our balanced chemical reaction, one mole of N2 will produce two moles of NH3. Okay, finally, we know that one mole of NH3 has a molar mass of 17.04 grams of NH3. Our units cancel, and our theoretical yield is 10.9 grams of NH3. Okay. So, step two, calculate the percent yield by dividing the actual yield given in the problem here by the theoretical yield we used, we calculated using stoichiometry. Okay, so their actual yield was 8.7, okay, divided by 10.9 times 100, okay, gives us a 79.8% yield. Hopefully you got that right. All right, so calculating percent yield given two reactants. Okay, I'm not telling you one is an excess now. I'm giving you the amounts of two reactants. So it's kind of like a limiting reactant problem. So consider our balanced chemical reaction here. If we have five grams of N2 and now we have 1.6 grams of H2, what is the limiting reactant? What is the theoretical yield of NH3? Okay. Your experimental lab procedure produces 5.06 grams of NH3. What is the percent yield of NH3? So we need to first determine the limiting reactant. Okay, so it's like a limiting reactant problem. So step one, solve for grams of product using the grams of the first reactant. Okay, so we have five grams of N2. Okay, we know that the molar mass of N2 is 28.02 grams of N2. We know, according to our balanced chemical reaction, that one mole of N2 will produce two moles of NH3, and one mole of NH3 has a molar mass of 17.04 grams. Double check to make sure your units cancel. Okay, gives us 6.08 grams of NH3. Now, we need to use our second reactant here. So, 1.6 grams is what we're starting with of H2. We know the molar mass of H2 is 2.02 grams. We know three moles of H2 will produce two moles of NH3. Finally, we know one mole of NH3 has a molar mass of 17.04 grams. Our units cancel, okay, giving us 8.99 grams of NH3. Okay, so compare the two results and determine the amount of product that can form from the limiting reactant. Well, if you recall from our last lesson, Okay, the little smaller number here. So N2 is the limiting reactant because it's a smaller number. Okay, and we'll have a theoretical yield of 6.08 grams of NH3. This is our theoretical yield. Step four, calculate the percent yield by dividing the actual yield given in the problem by the theoretical yield. Okay, so our theoretical yield is 6.08. Our actual yield given the problem is 5.06. So 5.06, okay, divided by 6.08 times 100, 
All right, gives us an 83.2% yield. Okay. All right, so now it's your turn. Go ahead and practice here. Okay, when you're ready to check your work, go ahead and hit pause. When you're ready to check your work, hit play. All right, let's see how you did. Let's follow our steps here. Remember, we're given the amounts of two reactants here. So it's kind of like a limiting reactant problem, but it's also a percent yield problem here as well. All right, so step one, solve for grams of product using grams of the first reactant. So we have 15 grams of N2 we're starting with, okay? We know one mole of N2 has a molar mass of 28.02 grams, okay? And we know that one mole of N2 will produce two moles of NH3, and one mole of NH3 has a molar mass of 17.04 grams of NH3. Okay, our units cancel, giving us 45.6 grams of NH3. Step two, now we're, let's do our second reactant here. Okay, so 13.5 grams of H2, 2.02 grams of H2 is the molar mass of one mole of H2. Okay, and we know three moles of H2 can produce two moles of NH3. And finally, one mole of NH3 has a molar mass of 17.04 grams of NH3. Okay, double check to make sure our units cancel there. Okay, giving us 75.9 grams of NH3. Okay, step three. Compare the two results and determine the amount of product that can form from the limiting reactant. Well, because this is the lower number, our limiting reactant must be N2 here. Okay. Therefore, we can only make, okay, because N2 is a limiting reactant, we can only produce a theoretical yield of 45.6 grams of NH3. Okay, now step four. Calculate the percent yield by dividing the actual yield here given the problem by the theoretical yield, what we just calculated. So 40.2 is our actual yield divided by 45.6, okay, times 100 gives us an 88, okay, 0.2% yield. All right, hopefully you got that right. All right, so go ahead and summarize. Remember, you can always write your own, okay? Go ahead and pause this while you work on your summary, and we'll see you next time.